At the onset, I would like to thank ACM and Neil Dhara and the organizers for inviting me here for the second time. And uh, so as she said, I, I am from IIT Madras. Today uh, and for tomorrow and day after tomorrow, I myself and uh, my friend Prajakta, we will be talking about uh, matchings in particular. And uh, so I, before I start, uh, start, with a, start with a specific problem, I would like to uh, motivate the setup of algorithmic game theory, which is the title of this workshop. So, at a very high level, one can think of this field as being designing systems for with, which have a good performance and uh, are designed for participants which are strategic. That is, they have their own goals and these goals may not be necessarily aligned with the designers of the system. So, we will see as we go along what does the design of a system mean and I would like to say that at any point feel free to raise your hands, interrupt me and say that you don't understand something. So, if something is unclear it is because I am not putting it rightly rather than you not following it. So, uh, let us take a very simple example of elections which have recently happened. So, elections happen at different levels, they happen at the college level, they happen at the national level and at the state level and so on. And during the election, there are several candidates whom we are interested in electing or there is actually there are several candidates who are contesting for the elect election, but there is typically expected that there is a one outcome. So, we will think about a uh, different election than the Indian election system, but there is a one, elect one person whom we want to vote as a leader. But as, as we know, each one of us has different preferences over uh, who should become the winner or who should win the election and not only about who should win the election, but if he does not win the election, then who should be the next candidate according to us. So, there is this system where we want to uh, elect a leader and as a designer of the system, one would like to, one would like to clearly specify how people vote or how people give or submit their preferences. Once the people have submitted their preferences, how does, how are these preferences collated and how is the winner determined? What is the underlying algorithm behind that? This is one example of a system where we would like to design a system where every, each individual would want to get his or her favorite leader elected into the, uh, wherever he, he is going to go to. A second example is of a government policy decision and uh, here is where uh, we all of us are taxpayers, we give our money and uh, the government is interested in taking a place and building some infrastructure there, but uh, the government would want to decide based on the people's preferences what gets built. For example, maybe there is a bridge that overbridge that is required. There is another thing that is a park that could be pos a possibility or a school that could be a possibility. And again, depending on the needs of individuals and the families, each individual or family would have a different set of preferences. So, how does, how does a policy maker or how does the system designer get these preferences from the participants? Finally, once the preferences are collected, how does the, how does that person, how does the system designer get those uh, preferences and decide what the final outcome is going to be and if the system is not designed well then there are reasons that people can actually tell falsify their preferences saying that although I would like to get this built I would be able to if I say this then it is most likely that uh, the other thing is whatever I like is going to get built and therefore there are reasons that people would like to falsify their preferences. For example, there was reason in day before yesterday's match that if India lost the match, there were better chances that Pakistan may not go into the match and may, may not qualify for the semi-finals. So, therefore, while losing in general may not be a good idea for the cricket team, but at a particular time losing may be a better option. So, therefore, misreporting their preferences or falsifying their preferences may uh, may be incentivized if the system is not designed well. So, what we are going to do is, these are very high level examples, we are going to look at a very particular example, delve deep into it and um, see what are the, what how the system is designed when everybody is truthful, what 
uh, how, how does the system behave if some participants are truthful if a single participant if a single participant lies and is not truthful and then if a collection of participants lie or a set of participants lie can they benefit so this is the overall theme for today so uh, to set up our particular problem i would like to ask uh, how many of you are not aware of josa the joint seat allocation okay so uh, possibly you are so you have the as so the others are aware of josa is what i understand the joint seat allocation so uh, if you are not aware of josa we will describe the system in a in in a for informal detail so there are these participants which are these college students so there are or sorry not college students and uh, these are 12th standard students and there are these institutes which are offering several programs so what do i mean by these institute offering programs can anybody give an example of what is an institute offering a program yes yeah btech bsc we'll think of it for now as btech program but even if i say btech programs it's a wide term so can we be more specific yeah so there are computer science mechanical civil engineering electronics and so on but even more specifically it is at a particular institute right so every institute has a certain set of program so we when we say a program it is a very specialized uh, thing that we are talking about which is uh, say let's say iit gandhinagar computer science program then there is iit madras computer science program then there is chennai mathematical institute bsc program and so on right so these are all the programs that we have and in fact when you think about josa there are two different kinds of programs which are categorized one which is the programs which get, which you can enter through via what is called as the iit uh, the je mains and the second which is which is uh, another level of qualification which is the je advanced right so there are two levels of exams and there are these two exams have to be given by all the participants if you are interested in a, in a program which just for, for which students can get qualified by or, or students are admitted using the je mains then you can stop at that if you want to get admitted into the program where je advanced is used you have to give both the both the exams right so now given these two exams students can get different ranks in these exam or there can be different rank orderings so think of uh, all of you writing the two exams and think of their being just two programs for the sake of illustration so there are two programs we call it p1 and p2 right these are the two programs that we have and there are let's say there are several uh, participants we call them a1 a2 a3 a4 for this for just for the illustration we will have four participants right so now uh, if you have these four participants each of the four participants will have a preference ordering on these two programs that is they they would like to get admitted into p1 or they would like to get admitted into p2 for this purposes of this uh, uh, lectures we will assume that everybody who is participating in the system would like to get admitted or get assigned to a program rather than being left unassigned so we will think of everybody having her, his or her own preference order which if i write like this it means that p1 is a more preferred program for a1 as compared to p2 and many of you who have submitted your josa preferences know that you have to rank order this even if you have not submitted it's quite intuitive to say that i like these programs in this order so this is how every participant is going to order the order their order the set of programs available in their preference order right if there were multiple programs there were maybe you are not interested in some of them and you may not rank some of them right 
so uh, so this is the set of programs and uh, this is the set of preferences by the participants okay so also what what else do we have in the system yes qualifications of the students for example if a1 is not qualified for the program p1 then there is no point in a1 saying that if p1 is my top choice right so let's assume that a1 is qualified for both p1 and p2 and for now assume that all a1 a2 a3 a4 are qualified for p1 and p2 right so they are eligible to write them in their preferences still what what else do we have yes somebody else Yeah, please raise your hand. Number of seats, very good. So we have possibly that P one has two seats because this is a very small system, and P two has just one seat. This is very unnatural, but it can happen at some place. So this is a toy example. Yeah. So there are number of seats. Anything else? So uh, instead of talking about the marks of the students, we will say that there is a rank ordering of the students by. by the way the marks have been assigned right so instead of talking about absolute mark there may be several other factors so we'll talk about a rank ordering of these students so because we said everybody is able to give all the uh, programs and therefore we will also say that maybe everybody has listed every uh, every pro p1 and p2 in some order there are only two orders here so this is how they have listed then there is a rank ordering of the student so maybe this is a2 a1 A three, A four, and there is P two could have the same order, or P two could have a different order because each program may have in fact conducted its own test and ranked students according to some order. So this could be something like A one, A four, A three, and A two. Right. So this this is the input to our system, and. these are some things that are known to individuals that is every each ai or the participant knows his true ordering of preferences each institute knows his his or its capacity that is how many students can it accommodate and it knows its rank ordering based on the exam it should truthfully reveal that typically but we'll see why sometimes we may not want to reveal it now what is the goal of the system designer yeah so since you have answered once i will ask your neighbor what do you think is the goal of the system designer all the seats are allocated okay anything else yeah so one goal we can think of is all seats are allocated or good number of seats are allocated anything else students and institute should be satisfied as much as possible okay so this is a uh, slightly Uh, at a very high level and it's not well defined but i'll write it students and institute should be satisfied actually these are programs but that's fine so does somebody want to say what does this mean by students and institute should be satisfied yeah maybe we'll yeah if you want to say i'll give get give you a chance and say but yeah somebody else who wants to say what how will you uh, make it formal in terms of so if i just say that a1 is assigned to p1 a2 is assigned to p1 a3 is assigned to p2 you have to look at that assignment and say whether it is a good assignment or not and we have to say that clearly so that anybody should be able to verify that this is a good assignment and we should be able to design algorithms to output output such an assignment yes
ओके ओके सो व्हाट शी इज सेइंग इज लार्ज नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स शुड गेट व्हाट इज देयर टॉप चॉइस एंड लॉट ऑफ और एंड मेनी इंस्टीट्यूट शुड गेट गुड रैंकिंग स्टूडेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू देम राइट सो नाउ नाउ दैट वी अंडरस्टैंड द सेटअप इज द सेटअप ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम क्लियर सो व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इज वी आर गोइंग टू मेक अ स्मॉल अजम्पन दैट ऑल इंस्टीट्यूट हैव वॉट वी विल से एज कपैसिटी वन right we will just assume for the moment just to illustrate everything that all institutes have capacity 1 and all students are qualified for all the programs as well and they also are interested in joining all the programs so when you look at a particular say, particular problem or instance of this we call this the instance of the problem we will say that there uh, if there are n uh, uh, n applicants and n programs we will have all n programs listed by n applicants and vice versa since they are qualified all the n applicants are listed in the uh, list of, or the in the ranking list of all the programs right so instead of having this example which is incomplete uh, what we will do is take a slightly more slightly larger example which is a little illustrative so i'm going to write a particular example which is we again have four participants a1 a2 a3 a4 and instead of calling them as p's i will just call them as b's throughout this lecture and we'll follow this convention throughout today so these are the preference orderings of the participants that is a1 thinks the program b2 is its top choice followed by b4 followed by b1 followed by b3 right and this is how you have to read out each preference list similarly the programs have also listed out the rankings of the participants so everybody is okay so this is this uh, this is what is the input to given to us for now we will assume that every participant that is a1 to a4 has has this as its true preference ordering and similarly all the institutes b1 to b4 they have ranked uh, they have given this ordering uh, whatever is the ordering according to the marks obtained by the students or whatever was their ranking criteria right so this is this is what is the input for this problem and what we want to do because because every program has a capacity of 1 i am not going to write them down the capacities of this program so every program takes one to one applicant or one student right so if people observe this and people are familiar with what are bipartite graphs this is there is an underlying bipartite graph where you have students on one side the programs or the institutes or the bees on the other side and in fact this is a complete bipartite graph because every a has an edge to every other b and in fact each edge has two ranks one coming from the a side and one coming from the b side and as soon as we have uh, we talk about an assignment of students to programs this is what is called as a matching in the bipartite graph so just to illustrate if you had a 3 cross 3 instance then the graph would look like this where you had all these edges and a particular matching would be possibly a1 assigned to b1 a2 assigned to b2 
and a3 assigned to b3 right this could be a particular matching if it was a 3 cross 3 system this is a 4 cross 4 system and there is an underlying bipartite graph which i am not drawing right okay so what our goal is is to compute a matching or a collection of edges which are vertex disjoint which satisfy some nice properties about that matching because because the underlying bipartite graph is complete we have several matchings in uh, that and we would like to check which or we would like to see which is a good matching according to our notion of goodness and we'll take clues from what you had suggested earlier right so we will see that maybe we will try to assign students to their best top choice programs or uh, universities so let's try this so that is a1 assigned to b2 it's it's top choice a2 assigned to b3 a3 assigned to so now b2 is gone so b2 is not possible for this thing we'll also check b3 b3 is also gone therefore let's settle for b1 right and a4 assigned to b4 so let's look at this uh, assignment so this is a valid assignment first of all because every every a has listed all b so you can potentially assign any a to uh, any b and it seems to be a reasonable thing to do because three out of the four people three fourth of the people have been assigned their top choice and there is one person who is assigned his third choice but we just live with that so i would like you to stare at this assignment and tell me whether what are the good parts about it one of them i have already said and i have taken clue from your suggestion that try to assign as many people as possible to their first choice and uh, but if there are some some drawbacks about this assignment see whether you can identify them maybe there are some from the uh, program side and so on so each one of you spend some few seconds think about it and then let me know who has an answer yeah we we'll let everybody think and then it back yeah from this row if anybody wants to answer yeah your row and the third one if it helps yeah okay so let's do the following we will mark for every university so b1 gets a3 right yeah b1 gets a3 b2 gets a1 okay okay yeah and then let's do it for everybody b3 uh, b3 gets a2 and b4 gets a4 which is again quite at a lower rank right okay so what should one do so what is your proposed output university should also be given some amount of priority right okay any other problem anybody finds so this is in some sense a valid issue with this we will we will see whether we can address it all together yeah any other issue okay okay Thank you. 
ओके सो आई विल टेक वन पॉइंट सो दिस इज दिस यू यू मेड अ गुड ऑब्जर्वेशन आई विल टेक वन पॉइंट फ्रॉम वॉट शी सेज इज दैट करेंटली देर आर टू पीपल हु हैव बी टू एज देयर टॉप चॉइस राइट सो इवन वेन देर वर टू पीपल और इन जनरल टिपिकली वी एक्सपेक्ट दैट लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव द सेम चॉइस सेम काइंड ऑफ चॉइस सेट सो सो वन इंस्टीट्यूट और वन प्रोग्राम इज काइंड ऑफ वेरी पॉपुलर एंड देर फॉर इट इज गोइंग टू बी द टॉप चॉइस फॉर मेनी इफ नॉट फॉर ऑल सो इफ यू इफ if there are two people applying for the or having the same top choice we are currently not looking at the universities or the programs preferences at all but just looking at the students preferences right so and in particular let's look at a very particular case where we look at this a3 who is not assigned to his uh, assigned to uh, the her second choice which is b3 and let's see what happens if a3 approaches b3 right so a3 goes to the university and says that i would like to get i had i would have like to got get admission into your program b3 says that the central authority or who has given this allotment has given me the student a2 so we look at b3's preference list and we see that a2 is a worse preferred student or worse ranked student according to b3's test or whatever examination or mark that b3 has given so if you look at from b3's perspective b3 is going to say that instead of taking a2 i would be happier taking a3 right so this this is a problem if you have multiple students who are assigned uh, who are applying for the same program we are not looking at the programs rank ordering at all at at the, the way we assigned this we just went according to the student preference right so while this assignment had this nice property that we we had uh, many students getting assigned to their top choices we we did not have the we did not have the property that uh, let's define it uh, formally that if you take any student student program which is an unassigned pair so let's make the fo definition formal so we will call this assignment now from now on a matching so while i'll not repeatedly say it we we'll, we have an underlying bipartite graph in that an assignment will now be called as a matching in the bipartite graph a matching is only a collection of edges of the bipartite graph such that no two edges share an endpoint so a matching is a collection of edges such that no two edges share an endpoint so in our uh, setup there are there there is a complete bipartite graph so we will always be talking about matching which match all the all the a's and all the b's so these are so these we will call as perfect matchings or com uh, yeah, perfect matchings so every vertex is going to be matched in our matching but we we can also talk about edges so for example this edge a1 b2 in this matching is a matched edge so i will use this notation to show this that is a, an edge on which i have drawn a wiggly arrow is a matched edge on the other hand in the underlying bipartite graph there is also this edge a1 b3 which is an unmatched edge right so what do i mean by unmatched edge an edge along which the assignment has not been made that is a1 does is interested in b3 but we have not assigned a1 to b3 there can be another matching in which a1 gets assigned to b3 right so now we are given a bipartite graph we have the preferences of the a side as well as the preferences of the b side and we are interested in outputting matchings and there are multiple matchings in the uh, in this system because the underlying graph is complete bipartite graph so there are multiple matchings but we are interested in a in the match in matchings that satisfy some good properties according to the preferences of the match preferences of the participants right so as we were talking about so this a3 b3 edge is an unmatched edge with respect to this matching because we have not made the assignment along a3 b3 and what we see is that a3 prefers its 
prefers b3 over its current partner what is its current partner what do i mean by this so what is the current partner of a3 b1 because this is what is the assignment that is what is it assigned to current partner b1 b1 and we also have that b3 prefers a3 over its current partner what is b3's current partner a2 how did we find this out we found this out from the preferences preference list of a3 and b3 right and we compared the current partners with the, with the respective ones b3 in one case and a3 in another case now if this happens this if you if you are aware this can actually lead to a court case in such a system right where a3 will approach the court and say that the b3 had published this rank ordering and it did not go the assignment was not made according to the rank ordering in fact i should have been assigned to uh, b3 rather than this b a2 being assigned right so in fact can we let's ask can a3 do the same thing for b2 so remember a3 is assigned to its current partner which is a third choice so a3 went and approached b3 and it found that it could actually get assigned to b3 but why stop at its third choice it can ask also can i also get assigned to b2 can i make make a better court case where i can actually approach the court and say that i should have gotten assigned to b2 so let's see what happens when you look at this unmatched edge which is a3 b2 so is it that is it true that a3 prefers b2 over its current partner that is true now let's ask the question for b2 so b2 is evaluating between a3 and a1 so we need to look at the preference list of uh, b2 and check whether a1 is better preferred over a3 so which what is the case yes or no yes so in fact not only that a3 b1 is a3 b3 is a problem that is a3 can claim that it should have got assigned to b3 it could go ahead and say this for b2 right so a3 does have a point to be unhappy about and he will make a big case if such an assignment is output by the central authority right at the same time you cannot expect that all the participants can get assigned to their top choice because as we see both a1 and a3 do have a do have the same 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 institute or program as their top choice which is b2 right so let us now say what what according to us is a good matching it may not necessarily satisfy all the criteria that you had specified but uh it is a very well established and well accepted notion of optimality and uh, so all of us understand what is a matching it is simply a collection of edges which are vertex disjoint or do not share an endpoint we suppose we are given a matching m that is an assignment in the system that is we have a bipartite graph we have preferences of both sides we would like to ask whether this matching is good we will say that a matching m or a pair ab is unstable or blocks m so why do we use this term unstable because we see that a3 b3 is a pair which is not happy with this assignment so it is going to create instability by saying that i will throw away my current partner that is a2 and get a3 assigned to me therefore this is going to cause something which is not a stable thing and this can go on forever right so this this is seems to be a not a good situation so a b is an unstable pair or blocks and first of all a b should not be a pair which is assigned in that matching that is in our in this picture 
A B should not be an edge which has that wiggly or uh, wiggly thing on its on it. That is, it should not be an assigned edge because otherwise it cannot block it. So we will say that in terms of notation, A B does not belong to M. That is, M is a collection of edges. So A B itself does not belong to M. Then we have two conditions. That is, A prefers B. to its current partner in m and it is conventional to denote this by m of a so when i say m of a it is its current partner in that matching so if i call this the matching m let's just make sure that we understand what is m of a2 what is m of a2 B three because it is its assigned partner. M of A three is B one. We can symmetrically say that uh, M of B one is equal to A three, right? So therefore, this notation is uh, common. That is, we'll use M of A to denote its current partner in the matching. So A prefers B to its current partner, and B prefers A to its current partner. in m which is called as m of a so in this case in which is called as m of b right so if we take if we are given uh, this instance where both a's and b's have complete preferences we look at this and if we are given an assignment we will look at every edge that is not assigned in this assignment and ask are you is this pair a blocking pair or is this an unstable pair with respect to this assignment and this answer can be quickly obtained by looking at the preferences of the men and uh, of of the a's and the b's right okay so let's take another some other pair so maybe we will take a1 b4 right so let's ask whether a1 b4 is blocking with respect to this assignment so this is the edge a1 b4 is it blocking with respect to this assignment yeah maybe yes what do you think yeah behind you no behind you yeah yeah that I can you just ask? Yeah, yes, yeah. Okay, so why is it not a blocking pair? So it will be a blocking pair if it satisfies all these three conditions, right? So let's see whether it satisfies the condition that it does not belong to M. It indeed does not belong to M, so it's a candidate to be a blocking pair. Okay, then you will ask: Does A one prefer B four to its current partner? no this condition is not satisfied from the b4 side in fact there is incentive for it to participate in a blocking pair because it is assigned to a4 which is a uh, rank 3 versus a1 is rank 2 so from b side it is indeed interested in switching to a1 but a1 is not interested in switching to b4 given its current partner right so this pair is not a blocking pair whereas a3 B two and A three B three were both blocking pairs with respect to this matching. Now, quickly, can somebody say whether there can be any other blocking pair? So, apart from A three B two and A three B three, is there any other blocking pair with respect to this? Okay, why no? so the other three participants a1 a2 and a4 have been assigned to their top choice so they do not have any better partner to to even think about getting or creating a blocking pair so because they cannot participate the only person from the a side that can participate is a3 and a3 has already participated in blocking pairs b2 and b3 with with b2 and b3 right so now We 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 understand what is not a good assignment because if you have blocking pairs, 
then these blocking pairs are going to create trouble either in terms of court cases or or saying that these assignments are invalid and they are they are going to get assigned to each other therefore having blocking pairs is not a good idea so what we would like to have is so we will say a matching m is stable if there does not exist any blocking pair with respect to m let's let's observe that a blocking pair can be defined only with respect to a given matching so if i am given just this preference system then i cannot define what is a blocking pair unless i am given a matching some candidate matching to begin with i cannot talk about what is a blocking pair so what my goal is is to be in, is to be able to output a matching which we will call as a stable matching and this matching is a matching in which if you look at any unmatched edge that is what we have drawn here the edges which do not have these wiggly lines these do not form blocking pairs or their endpoints would not like or at least one of the endpoints is not interested in switching to the other if both the endpoints are interested in switching to uh, to each other then that pair blocks that matching or is an unstable pair with respect to that matching so the question that we would like to ask is now these preferences are governed by participants who are in, individuals who have their own preferences these rankings come out of a system where exams are conducted so there may be arbitrary preferences of both the students as well as the institutes now given any system arbitrary system where i have n students and n programs and a complete bipartite graph with two ranks on each of the edges can i output a matching which has this property which is a stable matching right so does there exist a stable matching and if it exists can i find it efficiently by some algorithm or procedure right this is our goal is the question clear are there any questions about the system or uh, in the model okay and in fact this problem uh, while it was studied in 1962 as uh, the college admissions problem only this has a little more historical uh, uh, this thing to it it was indeed uh, used in something called as the national residency matching program in the us where these a's are interns and b's are medical interns doctors who want to do their internship and these b's are doc, uh, are hospitals where again each hospital like the earlier college admission has capacity and would like to take multiple interns but again there was a preference system on the uh, interns as well as the hospitals so uh, but when we study it in this one to one setting that is both the both the a side as well as the b side is having unit capacity that is they just want to get one a uh, partner from the other side this very naturally is called a marriage model and therefore this problem is called the stable marriage problem so from now on instead of calling these as interns or hospitals or students and this thing we'll call the a side as men which is customary in the literature and the b side as women right and this and like in the marriage you want to get just one partner so therefore this very naturally fits the marriage model so therefore you you have this uh, this thing where you have each one of them having unit capacities so we'll call them as men and women from now on so the a's will always be called as men the b's will be called as women So now, 
is, is everybody okay with the definition of what is a stable uh, matching? It's also called as a stable marriage or a stable matching. So, what I would like you to spend some time and find out is, is there an assignment which satisfies this nice property? That is, if I look at any unmatched edge, then indeed it does not block that matching, right? So, this matching is not stable. So, M is not stable. If a matching is not stable, we can quickly show a blocking pair. Even if you show one blocking pair, that is, that is a witness to show that it is not a stable matching, right? So, if I want to verify that a matching is, uh, whether a matching is stable, I can simply go over the unmatched edges, ask each one of them, are you a blocking pair? If the answer is yes for any one of them, uh, the matching is not stable, else the matching is stable, right? So, therefore, please spend some time and find out whether you can, whether this system has any stable matching. That is, can you fix the partners of A's and B's such that no unassigned pair or unmatched pair blocks that matching. Okay, any suggestion from anybody? Yes. Okay, can you say A1 to B2, A2 to B1, A3 to B3, A4 to B4. Okay, so she has given us this assignment which is a valid assignment and just to make sure that we are. So now let us all verify whether this is a stable matching, right? So she has proposed that this is a stable matching, she has given this output. So if we were to verify that this is a stable matching, we first look at A1 and say that A1 cannot participate in a blocking pair because it is assigned to its best partner. A2 can possibly participate in a blocking pair with B3, right? So we look at B3's preference list and check this edge A to B3, right? So B3 is assigned to A3 and it prefers A2 worse than that. Therefore, this assignment is, uh, this, this does not form a blocking pair and after this A2 cannot participate in any other blocking pair. Now we look at A3, A3 is assigned to B3 and A3 prefers B2 over its current partner. So, let us look at B2's preference list. B2 is currently assigned A1 and we look at B2 A3. So, what do we see here? B2 A3 is indeed a blocking pair with respect to this assignment. So, therefore, this matching does not stand its test for being a stable matching because we have identified one blocking pair. Even if rest of them are not blocking pairs, this is not a stable matching, right? It is a good attempt, but it unfortunately is not a stable matching. Anybody else has? Okay. So, maybe somebody has, who has not answered yet yeah. or maybe you have not answered yet. Yeah. Okay. Let me just erase this. A1 to B3, okay, A, A2 to B1, A3 to B2, A4, B4. Okay, 
okay so now i will let you verify whether it is a stable matching a1 is sorry okay a1 to b3 right it is stable okay so let's verify a1 uh, b2 it it can participate in the blocking pair a1 b2 but b2 is matched to a b2 is matched to a3 and it okay so a1 with b4 b4 is matched to a4 this is a1 so what about this pair a1 b4 so a1 uh, is matched to b3 so a1 would like to get assigned to b4 and b4 is currently matched to a4 and it prefers a1 right therefore this matching is blocked by this pair which is a1 b4 right so this also unfortunately is not a stable matching so after these many tries we one may start feeling that there are systems where there is no stable matching but indeed we will illustrate using another matching that this instance does admit not only one but two stable matchings so a1 b4 a2 b3 a3 b2 and a4 b1 right so so i'll leave it to you to verify unless you bit show me a witness blocking pair i will say that this is a stable matching because i have computed it <laughs> so can anybody spot a blocking pair or an unstable pair there are, it's not difficult to verify because anyway you just have to verify a1 b2 and a4 uh, b4 right these are the only two possibilities for being a blocking pair and both of them are not blocking pairs therefore this indeed is a stable matching right so at least this instance that we have written down this preference system system does have a stable matching right but before we go to uh, so what i will write down so this stable matching can be conveniently written without this graph and what i will write it as a collection of edges and i will call it m1 which is a1 b4 a2 b3 a3 b2 and a4 b1 right and m2 which is so now i am going to write another matching which you can again verify that that is also a stable matching which uh, which will i'll quickly write down so a1 b4 so a1 retains its partner a2 gets instead of getting matched to b3 it gets matched to b1 a3 b2 and a4 b3 right so in these two matchings one thing that we observe is a1 and a3 have retained their partners and a2 and a4 have switched their partners and it's a different matching right so these two are different matchings we'll call them m1 and m2 and it is easy to verify that both these matchings are indeed stable so what this shows is that at least this instance admits not only one but two stable matchings so in particular there the stable matching need not be unique right but we tried by hand by doing some permutations and <clears throat> we found that it was difficult to compute a stable matching by this inspection so there we sh we are we should ask is there a systematic way or an algorithm which we can apply 
to get a stable matching if it exists and say if it doesn't exist right so this is what we would be interested in before we go there we, let's ask one simple question whenever you gave me stable matchings all of them had size 4 that is they were indeed you were proposing matchings which had size 4 whether they happen to be stable or not but do you think that there can be a stable matching of size 3 in a bipartite graph where there is complete bipartite graph there is there are all edges So let's say that I indeed have a matching which has only three edges. So these three edges I am drawing them horizontal but in particular they can be in, in any way. So what does this mean that there is some AI and some BJ both of which have not been assigned to anybody and in particular not to each other. But what do we know about their edge between them? that edge is present in the graph because every AI has listed all of B1 to Bn and every Bj has listed all of A1 to An. Now what we did not do in this definition that we had is we will say that a pair AB is unstable or blocks M if AB does not belong to M which this edge satisfies. And then we say A prefers B to its current partner in M. In fact, it does not have any partner in M. And we very uh, ahead of time said that any participant likes to get matched over being unmatched. So, we will say that in fact one should say either A is unmatched in M. Because this statement A prefers B to its current partner is valid only if A is matched in M. Right? So therefore, if A is unmatched, it certainly prefers anybody over its unmatched partner. Symmetric, symmetrically, it applies to B that is either B is unmatched in M or B prefers A to its current partner. If this happens, we will call that a, as a blocking pair. So in fact, now this AI BJ is an edge which is a blocking pair with respect to this three size matching. And in fact, if you have any three size matching where you have a complete bipartite graph, it will be a matching which it will be a matching which will be blocked by that edge. Therefore, what this tells us is that if there is a stable matching, all stable matchings must have size n or 4 in this example. That is, if it is a n cross n system, then it has size 4, uh, size n, right? It cannot be smaller than that size else there is an edge which will block that matching. Everybody with me? Okay. Okay, so what we have seen is what is a stable marriage instance or a stable matching instance. We know how to specify the instance. For now we are talking about n cross n systems where there are n men, n women each man has a has a preference ordering over the men uh, over the women and vice versa we have also seen the definition of stability that is we know given a matching how to check whether it is stable or not right we what we will be interested now, now is to compute a stable matching. If it exists, right? So this is what we will give or present an algorithm for and this is a very classical algorithm which is given by two prominent researchers Gale and Shapley. In 1962, and as I said, while they made this study very formal, uh, and they gave, uh, they, they they formally wrote down the algorithm. A variant or a similar algorithm was already in place in the National Residency Matching Program prior to this in the U.S., and they were already following this without mathematically studying the properties of this algorithm, the problem, and so on. 
so what this algorithm suggests is very intuitive that is in fact it does exactly what our algorithm did earlier that is let's go let's look at it from the men or the student order and start looking at start applying or assigning the students to the most preferred program or most preferred women that is currently not yet occupied right so that that goes on well as long as there is no conflict so if you recall in the in our example a1 assigned to b2 was fine a3 assigned to b3 is fine a3 when it is trying to get assigned to b2 or apply to b2 there there is where the problem stems in that is we did not do anything we said that okay since this is not free we go down so here is where the algorithm deviates and we will instead of writing the algorithm formally first we will try to see what the algorithm does so we will call this a sequence of proposals and this a1 proposes to b1 Uh, sorry b2 which is the top choice in his preference list and currently because b2 is unmatched therefore she is going to say that yes tentatively i will say that this is this is my current partner right so this we'll say we'll use a tick to show that this proposal is accepted now a2 goes and proposes to the first person on the preference list which is b3 and because b3 is also unmatched to begin with all A's and B's are unmatched, so this also goes through. When A3 proposes to B2, now instead of saying B2 will B2 is matched, B2 now evaluates this proposal, and B2 looks at the preference list and sees that currently she is tentatively assigned to A1, whereas she is getting a proposal from A3, which is a better preferred person. Therefore, instead of rejecting this person or Uh, uh, the rejecting this B, this proposal from A3, she will accept this. But of course, her capacity is one. That is, she cannot accept more. Therefore, in fact, she rejects this proposal. That is, this is no longer a valid partner, and this proposal is gone. At this moment, A1 is no longer assigned to anybody, and A1 is free. Right. So now we have two people who are free: A1 and A4. and we can take we we will see we'll just go in the order so we'll go in a4 and a4 proposes to b4 and because b4 is again free therefore it is going to accept it now a1 is free is there any point in a1 making a proposal to b2 there is no point because that was where it got rejected even if it makes a proposal it is going to get rejected because b2 is going to retain the better of the two therefore it a1 will propose to the most preferred woman on the preferences which to whom to whom he has not yet proposed which happens to be b4 so think mentally that there is a current pointer in the preference list and it is going in that order so a1 proposes to b4 now again there is a conflict because b4 is not free so b4 is currently assigned to a4 and a1 is proposing what should it do it should reject the reject this assignment that is this which was this will go away and a a1 will will this will get accepted right now again this leaves a4 unassigned or unmatched now again a4 has no incentive to go and propose to b4 therefore it will go and propose to the most preferred woman whom he has not yet proposed which is b1 and we'll get a proposal a4 b1 which because b1 is still free it will accept it and this proposal gets accepted and currently we have a matching which is of size 4 which is a2 b3 a3 b2 a1 b4 and a4 b1 right in fact this is what was the matching that i presented to you which were which you verified that this is a stable matching right so now what we will write down is a clear algorithm in terms of a pseudo code that is when we are given an n cross n bipartite graph with preferences of the a's and the b's we will run this algorithm and we will prove some properties about the output of this algorithm 
right so this is called the gale and shapley algorithm so set all a's and b's unmatched while there exist an unmatched a i i did not write this as two sets but we can write them as the two sets a b and therefore the graph bipartite graph is a union b and the h set which is the complete uh, each a i has so while there is an unmatched edge unmatched vertex a belonging to a a proposes to the most preferred woman b on a's list to whom he has not yet proposed and this can be conveniently maintained by keeping a pointer where should you next propose if this gets rejected so a proposes to the most preferred woman b what ca what can be the two scenarios for b in a general uh, execution of this algorithm b can be either free or unmatched or it can be matched so if b is free then a b is tentatively accepted or is or then we'll say b tentatively accepts a and why do i say tentatively because if b gets a better proposal she is she is going she is possibly going she is going to reject the proposal from a else else let a prime is equal to m of b recall this notation we said that uh, the so there is a current matching that we are maintaining m which is empty so we, i should have also said m is equal to phi and then add a b to m so there is a current matching that we have so so if it is not free then it is matched therefore it must be matched to somebody let's call that partner as a prime so the picture is like this b is currently matched to a prime and b gets a proposal from a so at this point what is b going to do it is going to evaluate the proposal based on the preference list so if a sorry if b prefers a over a prime then m which was the current set of edges which were matched b if b prefers a then it is going to delete this edge that is m minus a prime b and then union ab that is it has removed this edge this removed this engagement or uh, matching and added this edge ab to the current matching and this is depicted by removing this a prime b and adding this a b right so this is what happens else if b prefers a prime over a we don't do anything and a remains unmatched that is a will now move its pointer from b to the next per person to whom it has to propose it is as good as b has rejected the proposal from of a else b rejects proposal of a and moves forward i won't write that but there is a pointer that we are making so this this algorithm is what uh, we will execute or run and this is called the gale and shapley algorithm we will want to ask cert certain properties about this algorithm but as a very first property is it even an algorithm that is does it even terminate always because it seems to start with everybody unmatched then some people get matched then some people again become unmatched so maybe it goes on in cycles and never terminates so can this happen that is it doesn't even stop it keeps on executing because it's just switching between these assignments and then again 
undoing them, redoing them again and again. If, if it happens, then this is not a good procedure to follow because for some examples, it may go on forever. Thankfully, for our example, it did not happen. So, can it happen that the algorithm keeps going forever? So, in this example, we had a finite set of proposals and it, it stopped after that at which when no man is unmatched, we have stopped that algorithm. That is the where the while loop stops. Any thoughts about whether it will go on? How many of you think that it will terminate? How many of you think that it may go on at, on some examples? So let's see how many of you think that it will terminate, that it will always terminate. Okay, you think that it will always terminate. So everybody else thinks that it can go on forever, right? Very good. So this is, maybe this is carved so that it terminates, right? Uh, but there may be some examples where it doesn't terminate. So we have a nice coffee break where you can generate an example where it does not terminate. And we have one, one contender who says that it will terminate. So, there we need a proof that it will terminate, right? So, maybe some people will switch sides, but let us see. So, when we come back, we will see whether somebody can give us an example that it does not terminate or somebody can give us a proof that it terminates. Please stop here now.